even freaking begin. So we're going to talk all about what I thought of the ninth installment of the Outlander series, one of my very favorite series of all time, okay, all time. So when this book came out, I was like, duh, can't freaking wait to read it. And then I started reading it and it took me forever to finish because it was just, there's no other way to say it. It was just so boring. It was so boring. Okay, before I go any further with this video and just breaking down all the things that I really didn't like about it and some of the things that I really did like about it because I didn't hate it. Hate is too strong of a word, but there are lots of things I didn't like about it and a bunch of missed opportunities. So before I dive into all of the specifics, I just want to say, obviously, there's going to be spoilers throughout this freaking video, okay? I'm going to be talking about all the things in the book. If you don't want to hear that, if you're planning to read this book and you haven't already, please exit this video now and come back after it's probably months it's going to take you to read this book because it's so boring. <laughs> so let's dive in to all my thoughts and feelings about the new Outlander, Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So here's my main issue that kind of sums up the whole problem that I think this book was. I think that it was 700 pages of basically nothing happening. And then in the last 150-ish pages, you start to finally get into some sort of story. And the story that unfolds in the last 150 pages is really stinking good, okay? She could have taken much longer to explain that story and given us way less of the boring first 700 pages. So truly, in the first 700 pages, you have little to no action. And there are a couple of Outlander books that are very much this style. The action slows down, they take some time for setup, for character development, you get really intricate storylines and lots of backstory about characters, you get conflict and the inner thoughts and feelings. And even though there's not a lot of crazy action happening, it really compels you and draws you in because you're just so connected to those characters. She writes them so well. She writes their dynamics so well that you really just love reading about their relationships. And it's okay in those slower Outlander books to take that pause and to take those moments to just enjoy the characters living their lives and doing the mundane everyday things that they do on the ridge. I love that. So that is totally not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I needed more action and that nothing happened. So the problem with what happened in Go Tell the Bees and what's different than those Outlander moments where she chooses to take a pause is there wasn't any sort of growth. It's like she wanted to give us a bunch of those character interactions because she knows that we love them so much but she just got it wrong this time. I felt like it was so choppy. We got so many choppy, small, disjointed little scenes between characters that didn't explore lots of inner conflict. It didn't explore challenges that they're facing. Um, the stakes weren't very high in any situation. The tension didn't build like she's normally so good at building the tension. And really nobody faced any crazy consequences like Outlander typically brings. And let me tell you exactly what I'm thinking about. So I'm thinking about the choppy little scenes um, that had little buildup and basically no payoff. So for example, Bree's heart issue. We set up through this whole book, these little moments of her having heart freakouts and panicking about, oh God, should I not have another child? Is it a mistake that I'm here? Am I going to be okay? Is my heart going to get worse? Is it going to heal itself and I'm good? What's going on here? There's so much worry and so much strife about her heart condition and then it's basically never mentioned again there's no consequences in fact she has a freaking baby in the last like two pages of the book it felt like and nothing about her heart was even mentioned she got through childbirth totally fine no complications whatsoever and it just felt like why have you bothered to set up this heart thing if you're not even going to make it any sort of issue when it really matters. It was a very strange, kind of disjointed, unsatisfying little story tangent. Another one that I thought was very like low stakes, low consequences was the fire at Fergus and Marsley's print shop. Like what was even the point of that? I get that it was kind of a callback to the fire that happened just one book ago where Henry Christian died. But other than creating some like PTSD strife for the characters in that moment, there was no point to that print shop being on fire. And then you've also got the subplot of Brie and Roger sneaking the firearms. 
you know, they take them all the way to where Fergus and Marsley are, and then they're, they take them all the way back home to the ridge. And typically with something really high stakes like that, that they have talked about and they've built up as being this really dangerous, stressful mission that Bree and Roger are sending on to get the firearms to equip them to start a ridge army, essentially, you would think that that would be a storyline that we typically follow. And maybe along the way, they run into some really close calls. Maybe they get searched out and, or maybe they have to fight off a band of thieves on the way. You usually have some sort of risky element to challenge this really hard thing that you've built up that they're going to be doing. But this time there was absolutely no strife. It totally went off without a hitch and we don't even follow them on the way home. They just poof, magically appear at the ridge. And I think it's because she realized she only had 150 pages left to wrap up a story that she could have spent 500 pages telling. And it was like, we don't have time to follow Brie and Roger because we spent the first 700 pages talking about random crap nobody cares about. <laughs> Another really unsatisfying, probably the most unsatisfying little scene and character moment that I just thought was such a missed opportunity was basically the whole character of Agnes. You follow her. I really loved her story tangent that they went down of her mother getting pregnant and being, you know, in trouble, her coming to the ridge to get Claire's help, Claire going and saving them. I loved that little moment because you see a glimpse of Claire saving the baby with, is it her freaky blue magic or is she just that really great of a doctor? Um, it's kind of a glimmer of Claire's, Claire's coming into some power here. I loved that. So they set Agnes up really well. And then when she pops back up later in this story and becomes part of their household, you're like, oh great, I love this. She and Fanny can be friends and I can't wait to learn more about her as a character. And then they freaking make her pregnant by she doesn't know which English soldier. And what a fascinating, very, very outlander thing to do. But we don't even get a scene with Agnes. We don't get a scene to hear her side of the story, to get her thoughts and feelings, to have her being ashamed and apologizing to Jamie and Claire. You get nothing from her side of the story. It's just completely glazed over. And then she just goes off to England and I guess we'll never see her again. Like, what the heck? I want to know the story of a girl in the freaking American colonies that gets pregnant out of wedlock by one of two maybe English soldiers and she has to choose between the two of them. Yes, that sounds right up my alley. That sounds exactly like what Outlander is about. But what the heck? Why did we not get a satisfying end to that story? We didn't even know who she chose. It was just like, oh, bye, Agnes. You're a non-issue now. Go be with the English. Whatever. What was even the point of you? So annoying. And then we have the whole conflict they tried to set up with Roger being appointed or whatever they call it. Um, and they make a whole big deal out of him having this meeting and because he's killed someone, you know, being recommended by the priests or not or whatever they call it. I don't, I don't know the religious side of things, but they built it up as this big, big meeting and probably there was going to be some conflict there. But then he came back and the meeting was completely fine and he was made a minister, like no big deal. He didn't have to struggle through it. He didn't have to prove his case. We didn't even go along with him, really. It just felt like this is something we just have to tick a box for and get it done. So we're not gonna delve into the details of it. We're just gonna slide on by it. What the heck? And then, man, I am just continuing. There are so many little disjointed, unsatisfying, no tension, no stakes stories that happen that just make you frustrated. It's like she's telling a half story with all these little different scenes. Probably the most annoying one was the whole Ulysses conflict. First, when Ulysses pops up, you're like, Yes, it's Ulysses. Oh my gosh, so good to see you. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Please tell us everything. And then it's like, oh no, Ulysses, why would you do this to us? How can you be this evil? No, 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 we don't like you. And that right there is classic Outlander. I loved that moment. I loved that moment. And then she proceeded to just basically have it be another non-conflict with no stakes. Like he threatens their land and you're like, oh crap, they're up Shit's Creek right now because really this is a real true problem. Maybe she's setting us up to explore this in the next book and that'll be, you know, their big fight. And that seemed like a very interesting conflict I wanted to continue exploring. But then it solved out of nowhere with absolutely no intervention of Jamie and Claire. They just randomly from the guy that Claire helped save get the freaking deed to the land and the letter saying that they have to give the land up. And it's like, oh, problem solved. We didn't even have to do anything. That is just so counter to how Outlander normally goes. And I didn't like it. 
I didn't. Okay, so obviously with all these choppy little scenes and not a lot of character development or character growth, lots of just unsatisfactory moments, I think one of two things probably happened here and maybe a mix of both. I think one, she probably felt a lot of pressure writing this book. It's been seven years since we've had an Outlander story and we're all chomping at the bit to know what happens next. And we're getting near the conclusion as well. So the stakes for her are pretty high and maybe that just got to her and she just didn't do as good of a job as she normally does. And I think that's okay. Like it's okay. It's okay. Not every single one of these books are going to be a slam dunk hit amazing masterpiece. Or two, I think she's run into a problem where she wasn't ready for the series to end with this book, obviously. We know that she said that 10 books is probably the number that we're going to get to wrap up the whole Jamie and Claire storyline. Now, whether more Outlander books come from different characters and exploration of their life and their story continuing, I'm sure we'll get that. But I think the Jamie and Claire ending is coming in book 10. And so I think that gave her a problem in this one of pacing. I can see how it was probably a strange place to be in writing this book. She wants to honor the fans and give us the character stuff we've been waiting for and loving, um, but she also needs to set up the next book, but she also needs to make this book exciting so we like it. And I think just the ratio was off. She got it off. Like, did anyone else feel like this was a total wasted book for Jamie and Claire? Both of them, their relationship was a bit disjointed in this. We got some romantic scenes between the two of them, but honestly, they were kind of weird. Did anyone else think that they were kind of not how they normally are, kind of weird romance scenes that I kind of would read it and be like, what What does that even mean? What just happened? Like, I don't even get what this is supposed to be saying. And also, especially Claire, basically just spent the whole time cooking and complaining about the food that she had to figure out to make. And don't get me wrong, I love knowing about the kinds of foods they have to put together. And that's a great fun part of Outlander to figure out the food conflict because obviously they have to grow or kill all their food. And it's just fun to know about what they store for the winter and what they make. And I like that, but it felt like that was Claire's only character point this entire time. Just what's for dinner? What's for dinner again? Oh no, Claire, it's time for you to cook dinner. Better figure it out. It just felt so much like a waste of Claire and her abilities. And I say that, but you did get some really great moments with Claire, obviously hinting at her magic and her hair turning silver and the blue light being a much more frequent happening to her. Clearly we're building, this is a building book for Claire to come into her magic fully in the final book. But just because you need to put her on pause a bit and only just build little things to get to the finale, doesn't mean you can't give us some really dynamic and interesting scenes. Like it doesn't mean she has to spend the whole time cooking dinner and that's all we get. And another weird thing I noticed that I didn't necessarily not like, but I did think there was a strange amount of callbacks to old books and reminiscing on their past and their story between Jamie and Claire. I felt like 75% of their scenes were them just being like, Oh, honey, do you remember what when this happened at Culloden? Or do you remember what King Louis said in France or, you know, whatever. They just spent so much time back and forth talking about what has happened in their past and recalling and reminiscing on their memories. Instead of giving us a real good inner look at their thoughts and feelings and their struggles and what they're going through, I didn't feel like we got a lot of interpersonal thoughts of Jamie and Claire this time. I just found it strange the amount of reminiscing that there was. Here's what I think it all boils down to that she should have done differently. Instead of making 700 pages of character scenes and backstories and introductions and just kind of boring, choppy, disjointed scenes, and then have the last 150 pages be really good story setup. Um, I think she should have switched it. And maybe even if not switched it, just made the portions and the ratio a little more equal. Make 150 pages to 300 pages of those character scenes and the choppiness, and maybe it won't feel as choppy because there's not as much of it to get through. And then start setting up the story for the last five, 600 pages. Um, because the stories that she did start setting up at the end were very interesting. I loved, 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 which this is so strange because normally I hate, I loved reading about John Gray. He is the one character that I just like, anytime I come to one of his chapters, I'm like, 
oh, let's push through. Let's get done with him as soon as possible because I just don't identify with him very well. I get that he's very well loved, but just, I, I don't know. He's not for me. I don't, I don't love him. I don't really find him interesting to read, but I did in this book. I loved his whole subplot. And then at the end, him being captured and stuck on this ship and you find out that the big bad villain probably for the next book is someone finally from the future. I love that we're finally getting joining of the past with the future. I cannot wait for that. I think that's going to make such an interesting and compelling finale conflict. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and so that was really compelling. I just wish she would have taken more time to set that story up instead of spending so many pages on just disjointed, kind of boring scenes. Okay, before I leave you, I do want to tell you the things that I really liked about this book, because I did like a lot of it. The first thing that I loved, maybe even best, about this book was the Rachel and Ian subplot. I loved a few chapters where they went to find Ian's first wife and the whole child conflict. I loved getting a glimpse of everything Rachel was thinking throughout that whole process. Rachel is maybe my very favorite Outlander character. Maybe not my favorite, but one of my favorites. Top three at least. I love Brie too. Brie's one of my faves. Um, but I loved how much time we got of Rachel's inner thoughts and just how expertly and respectfully and wonderfully she handled that situation. It was just really fun to read and made me love her even more as a character. I loved that whole subplot. I thought it was great. Another thing I really loved about this book was Fanny. Just all of Fanny. I loved her character. I loved her backstory. I just loved everything about her. Every time she was in a scene, I was like, yes, Fanny, more Fanny, please. And if she and Jermaine don't have a little thing and get together and fall in love, in the next book. I'm going to be so sad because don't you think they were setting up for that? Did you guys think that? I totally got those vibes and I am here for it if that's the case. Another thing I really liked was all of the William scenes. I thought his story was really interesting to follow this book and normally I could take or leave William. Um, I think he has some great parts and I think he's kind of boring in some other times but I loved his whole story. I loved the new character of Amaranthus? Do we, have we, is there a collective decision on what we're calling her? I don't even know how to pronounce the name, but I loved their dynamic, their back and forth. Another thing I really loved was the Ginny and Jamie scene we got of them praying together. Oh, I just love that sisterly, brotherly relationship that they have. You can tell they have been through everything together. They love each other so much and they're just so comfortable around each other. I thought that scene was one of the very best scenes in the entire book. So that's it. I made it through. It was frustrating. It was frustrating to read. I thought it was a bit of a dud. I still really liked some parts of it. There were parts that I thought were totally missing and could have been better. Um, but I do understand that this is a really hard book to write because we're coming up to the finale and you can only do so much before, you know, heading into the epic finish of the Outlander series as we know it at least. So I can't wait for the freaking next one. I'm excited to see what happens with John. I'm excited to see what happens with this new villain that's from the future. I can't wait. I, I know book 10 is going to be a smash hit. I just know it. But this one, it missed the mark a little for me. And that's just my opinion. So if you think I'm totally wrong, let me know down in the comments below. Although it's probably going to take some serious convincing to change my mind. But please try, try. And if you really didn't like it like me, let me know your reasoning down below as well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want more Miley content. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.